All right, welcome to the White Hat versus Black Hat SEO show. My name is Josh, Giant 80s Wave Bashinsky. <laughs> so we're in the lazy days of summer, ladies and gentlemen. And as you can see, there are no other people here. There are no other white hats or black hats to be had today. I'm all by my lonesome, all by myself. I could sing a song about it, but I won't. So today is not the white hat versus black hat SEO show because there's no black hats here to defend black hat SEO. Today is the all white hat all day SEO show where I will teach you how to do white hat SEO or maybe, maybe not. I see some, I see James joined here. James, if you have a microphone, go ahead and pipe up if you're going to defend black hat today. Otherwise, it's going to be the all white hat all day show. Uh, <laughs> uh, so uh, today, uh, we're just going to be answering your questions. Uh, I'm going to try and give you my perspective of how you would do SEO from the white hat perspective, all the way from uh, uh, keyword research, all the way up to what my exact process is to go up and actually rank websites. So for those of you who are always asking kind of, you know, how, you know, how would you do this? How would you do that? I'm going to try and take it step by step all the way through of what kind of what I would do in general and how I would in general kind of rank websites. It depends a lot on what niche you're in uh, a little bit for the most part. But uh, that's what I'm going to be going through today. Um, so if you have any questions that you want to ask me today, please ask them in the chat if you're watching live on YouTube on the top right hand side. If you are watching this after the show is aired live, you can ask your questions down below in the comments, and I will try to get to them there. And today is all about the white hat SEO. So if you have any questions about your deepest, darkest secrets for white hat SEO, is it really white hat? You know, uh, stuff like that. Or if you want me to take a look at your site, go ahead and share it. Let me know. Uh, James, do you have a microphone, or do you still have uh, fingers for 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 chatting? Okay, James, I don't know if you can hear me or not, but <laughs> there you are. You can sit there. Okay, so as I said, we're in the lazy days of summer. Uh, what's new in, in, in SEO right now uh, is the first segment we like to do. Uh, not much. <laughs> uh, there's rumors of another update going on, but, I mean, that's kind of getting to be – I mean, you could say there's, a, there's an update for Google every week, uh, but there's not uh, not every week do they admit that there's a uh, – uh, a uh, uh, an update going on. So, but uh, jo uh, but uh, Barry Schwartz has uh, mentioned that there is an update going on uh, recently. There was also an update from May 16th all the way to May 26th. I saw it on my uh, I saw it on my test servers. And uh, and so, if you're seeing any kinds of uh, changes or switches there, that's that's probably what's going on with that. Um, if you're wondering what the update is about, I do have a, uh, uh, a core report that kind of uh, shows what it's about. Let me share it here with you really quickly here. You've probably seen it already. It's from uh, the 16th uh, of April, this one. Uh, the May update, we don't know what it is, but these are the ones from the from 16th of May. Uh, 16th of April, rather. Sorry, uh, it was keywords. In the, uh, it was keywords, 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 keywords all over the place. Terms of service uh, pages have gone up a bunch of times. HTTPS has gone up a bunch of times. So it was uh, it's things like that. Um, the problem is, is I share that kind of screen reluctantly because at the end of the day, uh, it's it's getting very dangerous to try and spot diagnose what's going on in uh, in SEO. I, I would do an entire audit to find out what's going on with your website. Uh, there's plenty of times when uh, you know I do audits for a living. There's plenty of times when uh, and ranking sites as well. But uh, I do a lot of penalty recovery and audits and stuff like that. If you're having trouble ranking, basically, if you're not ranking on page one yet, there's something wrong. That's kind of the philosophy with SEO. You can take is that if you're not ranking on page one when you want to rank on page one, there's something the matter. There's something wrong going on there. And you need to find what it is. And the reason why I like to take a, a full audit approach is because you can very easily overlook things like it's technical problems, it's 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 quality problems. Those things are very easy to overlook, and you go right to on page and links. Everyone just goes to links right away, thinking that links is still the main SEO factor. In my estimation, links accounts for maybe 16% of rankings these days. I would say it's 33% quality, 33% on page, and 33% off page. And off page for me is split between social and between links. 
So, um, uh, you know, in my opinion, and uh, I could show you my results. I have been bragging about my results day in, day out. Uh, just for those of you who don't uh, know about the results, I can show you uh, very, 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 very quickly uh, here what those look like. Uh, but quite frankly, uh, in my opinion, links are only really uh, up to. So, I mean, I've got, let's see here. I mean, I've got this one. I got this one. This one. This guy said he didn't need an audit. <laughs> that was kind of funny. These ones, this one, this one, et cetera. I'm talking with Google engineers, yada, 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 yada. I talk with more Google engineers, more rankings, yada, yada. Okay, so you get the idea. I'm not going to beat her over that. So, um, so that's that's my opinion. That's based on a lot of experience. That's based on experiments. That's based on uh, 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 ranking in 2018. All those examples I showed you are 2018. So, so I'm trying to provide the proof. I'm all about evidence based. I'm trying to provide the proof that I know what I'm talking about. And there it is. Uh, and I also shared experiments, share experiments on a, on a regular basis. There's some experiments I showed recently I didn't mean to <laughs> on Monday. I accidentally broadcasted a uh, live, one of my private meetings that's supposed to be private just for my Skype group. If you guys didn't see it, sorry, I unlisted the video because it's supposed to be private just for my Skype group. If you want to see that uh, weekly test meeting to see my test results every week, email me to join my Skype group. It's not that much money per month. There's a, there's a tiny little amount. And you can join my Skype group. You can get access to me and other SEO experts right away. And you can get access to those Monday meetings as well. So I see Gabriel join. Hi, Gabriel. How are you doing? Do you have a microphone on, Gabriel? Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. Can you hear me? Yes, I can. You can ask your yeah. question live if you like to, my friend. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. So my question is, uh, when you put out duplicate content, like press releases, for example, uh, does Google include it all in your index or cer just certain sites? That's a great question. That's a very, very good question. Um, it's hard to answer. Uh, I think there would be three tiers, three tiers. The first tier is the press releases you can see when you do a search without clicking on the omitted results. So those are the highest quality press releases. Those are the ones that Google likes the most for whatever reason. And for sure, those links are counting, for sure. The second tier is when you click the omitted results and they still show it to you. So you have to click the omitted results there. They're clearly duplicate, but they're showing you the, uh, that result. And I think those links are probably counted as well. The third tier, there's probably uh, four tiers actually. The third tier is ones that they have discovered, but they have, uh, they've crawled, but they've not indexed. And so when you do an info colon or a site colon search to find that uh, URL, you can find it, but it has no value. It doesn't give you, it gives you a blank search page. And then finally, the last tier of press releases are ones that they thought were so spammy and so garbage and so thin and so duplicated that quite frankly, they just, they don't even, they just say, we don't, we've never seen this. You can't index it. it, it they're just filtering it, right? You can't ever get that submitted to the index. So, um, oh, the email address to join, any, any email, any emails, any, if you have any SEO questions at all, you can email me at joshpachinsky at gmail.com. Sorry, I forget to put that out sometimes. I'll put that in the, in the description as well. So, so I, that's probably why you're asking, Gabriel, is, is you want to know what links are being counted. <laughs> now, there's other people who claim that it used to work, that if you had a site that was de-indexed or if you had a page that was de-indexed, those links still counted. We've we've run those experiments, and it seemed to be the case. We still need to run that again. That was a couple of years ago, and now, as you know, Google has made all these changes with indexing and filtering, and people are still having trouble getting uh, pages indexed. Although I never really had this issue, but I'm usually all the links that I'm acquiring through my white hat super duper content is uh, all very high quality and and very very high quality he's making the he's making the money symbol again with his hands the, the the very very high quality um uh kind of posts so they index pretty much right away and then this is this is my test actually if i ever acquire he's using scare quotes again ladies and gentlemen he's for the podcast he's using square quotes if i ever acquire links that uh on say a lower quality blog that that don't index right away i never get links there again I never get links there again. And that's just because that's what 
at the end of the day, that's what makes me a white hat and, and not a black hat is because it's just the level of risk you're willing to take on, right? Because at the end of the day, if you want to take a hard line a philosophical uh, argument of what a white hat versus a black hat is as far as Google is concerned, we're all black hats because we're all trying to manipulate the rankings for our own benefit. And that is their definition of what a black hat is, someone who's trying to manipulate the rankings, uh, trying to rank, literally trying to rank a site higher. Of course we're trying to rank a site higher. Who in their right mind or what professional SEO uh, just says, I will just fill out your site map and your, your titles and meta descriptions because I like the HTML specification and that's the proper specification or, or something ridiculous like who, who, who the F would do that? And who would pay someone to do that? that that's, the, that's the silliest thing I've ever heard. But I, I think it's just complete bullshit really at the end of the day. So yeah, so that, uh, to answer your question, I think that's probably what you're asking. That, let me ask, uh, that's my answer for that. All right, let me get to the chat here and see Nathan says, uh, can Josh get some likes? Yes, please. If you if you don't mind liking the video, if you want to, I'm not twisting your arm. If you don't, if you if you're philosophically opposed to liking the video, then don't like the video. For some reason, whenever I say that, some people give it a down vote. You know, whatever. You know, whatever whatever floats your boat, as they say. Okay, Sean Greenwood asks, Hey Josh, do you have any specific methods you use when pricing for your clients? Oh, that's interesting. So recently, I've been getting a lot of SEO questions from people who do SEO, which uh, for a living, which I find interesting, like like consultants as opposed to like in-house SEOs, which is what I usually get, or even just like uh, a guy who runs his own website who has to do SEO, a business owner has who who runs their own website who has to do SEO on the side. So Sean, um, it all when it comes down for pricing for your clients, it all depends on a what you want to make and b what they're willing to pay and c what the market kind of says is 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 your worth. So it's it's a it's a fluctuation between all, all those three, brother. When it comes down to it, uh, so if you want to make a thousand bucks a month, but your clients only want to pay a hundred dollars a month, and the market says white hats like you usually charge five hundred dollars a month, well then there's the number's got to be somewhere in there, right? That's that's just the way it it goes. Uh, there's people I charge anywhere from five hundred to three thousand a month. That's just where I like to be. I have charged more in the past. I've had clients who've paid more in the past. But in my experience, they start to get really clingy and start to call me on the phone a lot. And I mean, my clients, if you're listening, you can call me on the phone. That's fine. But they wanted to call me every day like I was an employee. And there's a reason why I don't do in-house SEO for Coca-Cola or some big brand. Uh, not that I haven't gotten those offers. is because I like sitting on my butt in my office here <laughs> with, with, my, with my things behind me. And I don't like working for other people. And I don't like them calling me on the phone too much. Uh, it just annoys the heck out of me, you know. So... I like my freedom. So, so, so you know, it has to do with your life and what you want and what they want, and it's a negotiation. And you can use the kind of intersubjective determination of what everyone else is charging as kind of a bulwark. It's like house prices. House prices. It's a subjective determination at the end of the day what you want to charge and what they want to pay. What the value of something is. It's subjective. That you have to just come to an agreement as to what you think is fair, and then over deliver every time. Always try and make sure you're managing client expectations. Always trying to make sure you know what they want. So I recently ran into a problem uh, where a client really just wanted to rank for kind of a vanity keyword, and I made them rank great for all these other keywords, and I increased their traffic, I increased their conversions, I increased their, their rankings, but really at the end of the day, they wanted to rank for this vanity keyword, and I just didn't notice. Like I was, I was being a bad, bad consultant, and maybe they said it to me, or maybe they said it in an email. I don't think they did, but but maybe maybe they did. Maybe I'm wrong. And, and uh, they said, yeah, well, I've paid you this money, but I wanted to rank on this vanity keyword. I'm like, yeah, but look at all this other rankings I got for you. And, and they're like, Mom, I wanted this vanity keyword. So that's the way consulting goes. You know, uh, you got to try and be your best consultant because at the end of the day, you're going to make more money that way. Uh, Blake Mitchell asks, let's get some more SEO questions here, guys. Blake Mitchell asks, what steps would you take after optimizing fully for those super tough keywords you just can't seem to crack or get on first page? What do you do when you think you've tried everything? Blake, that is another excellent question. Uh, you do an audit. You have to go, yeah, a second pair of eyes would help. Uh, you have to go get an audit from a professional who does audits for a living and is going to look at every little nitpicky thing, even the nitpicky things you think are fine, even the nitpicky things you think are squared away. As I said, obviously, no offense, but obviously there's something wrong there. If you're not ranking on page one, there's something wrong. 
right? There's something wrong with your, with your process. There's something wrong with your rankings. There's something wrong with your methodology, or there's something wrong with your theories, or there's something wrong with your strategy. So at that point, when you're trying to, trying to crack page one, you just can't do it, there's probably some little thing you've overlooked or two or three little over things you've overlooked, and you just need a second pair of eyes to show you, brother. So did I mention I do audits? <laughs> yes, I do. So I'm sorry for the, for the, for the blatant upsell. But I'm still doing SEO miss. It's still S it's still SEO miss going on for this month. I'm still doing 50% off my audits and 50% off, roughly 50% off of your first six months if you pay all up front. So email me at joshbashinsky at gmail.com and uh, we can definitely help you out. Uh, like I said, I'm very good at audits. You know, I mean, I hate to I hate to be braggadocious, as they say, but but quite frankly, I'm like the best in in the industry <laughs> I, I, there's no there's no way i can prove that to you other than show you all that big huge page of all the results again but and, and that's annoying and and that's really braggadocious but i'm really uh i'm quite frankly the best at this so so if you need another pair of eyes and i'm pretty cheap considering a lot of other white hats charge we had a question about what you should charge white hats comparable to me like eric ward rest his soul eric enga guys like that white hats like that they charge five to ten k a month and I'm not charging anywhere near that, uh, but mind you, you know, I'm, like I said, that's on purpose because I'm a, I'm right at the price point I want to be at. So uh, get get my juicy chess club brain working on your SEO. I I guarantee I can promise results. I guarantee page run results to you if you do everything I say. If you stop doing what I say or you ignore what I say, well then I can't promise page one results to you anymore. And that happens too. I had another client recently. I, I love all my clients. Don't get me wrong. But he's like, do we really have to do that? Do we have to do this? And I'm like, yes. Yeah, you got to do that, <laughs> right? Otherwise, the, the 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 results are not quite as good. I could probably still get you there, but but you know, uh, it, I'm only as good as as my methodology, which I'm I'm still going to go through, and you'll see you'll see what I mean. Blake Mitchell asks, also meta descriptions. Are you changing back to 150? Blake, I don't care what the length of the meta description is. I mean, that's kind of a lie. I do care what the meta length is. I'm uh, yes. I would always if the if the Google's always changing that amount, and so I don't pay that close attention. But at the end of the day, I at very least always try and have my best sales words and my best marketing speech in the beginning of the meta description, so that if they re reduce it in size, I'll still have it in there. Uh, I use a tool. Let me share the tool with you. I don't know if he's updated it recently, but it's a really good tool. Uh, I use two two different tools actually. I would use this tool I'm about to share with you in uh, coordination with another tool. So the first tool I'll show you is this one here. It's the Google Search Preview tool. It's made by this guy here. I believe he's uh, he's uh, in uh, Australia, I believe. So let me share that here in the chat. Therp emulator tool, and I'll put that in the comments later on when somebody asks me. Invariably, someone will ask me, what was that tool? So I like using this because you can type it in here. It's going to show you what it should look like. So let's just choose, uh, I don't know, um, let's see here, uh, Walmart. What is Walmart.com? Okay. So let's just go and take, let's rewrite Walmart's title tags. Just, you know, because we're nice. Okay. So here's Walmart. Actually, this is a pretty good title tag. Walmart.com, I mean, it's not helping them rank for any keywords, but they don't really need to care about that, do they? <laughs> and they got their brand name in here. They got their brand messaging in here, save money, live better. Uh-huh, okay. Uh, and then uh, look at this. They have it 163 characters. So if you wanted to be 150, you'd have to get lower. So um, shop Walmart.com for everyday low prices, free shipping on orders of 35 plus, or pick up in store. Uh with discount. So I would just add with discount here. And that would probably, that's getting them the 149. So now they're lower than 150. So because it is, to, to get to your question, it is important to make sure that this is completely viewable. And then I might even be a bit more sensational. I'll be like, save more like that. It helps you stand out. Of course, uh, Walmart's a bad example because they don't have to do any of this because they're going to rank no matter what. But you, when you're you and you're not Walmart, <laughs> you need to stand out. And so I would even use asterisks here like this, save more, so that when people go on the uh, on the SERP, their eyes are going to see this. Their eyes are drawn to this immediately, right? They're going to notice stuff like this. This is one way you differentiate yourself. So this is a very important tool, and I would make sure to do this 
The other tool I would use is uh, Page Optimizer uh, Pro, uh, which is uh, which is uh, Kyle's tool here. I would definitely use this to do all of your on-page optimization, and that includes what you should be ranking for, uh, the keywords you should be ranking for as well. So I would use both tools in conjunction. Uh, don't just use Kyle's tool and then think you're done. I would use the other tool to make sure your title tag still looks good because you still have to worry about click-through rate as well. So here's Kyle's tool. I'm also pasting that in the uh, chat. And, and you want to use coupon code Josh5 for five free credits in that system. So use the coupon code Josh5 for five free uh, credits in, in Kyle's system uh, on Page Optimizer Pro. That's how I would do that. Uh, Marco asks, what would you do if a potential client comes up to you who's currently ranking number two and asks you if you can make them number one and are only interested if you could put them on number one? Uh, Marco, I charge by the hour, so I, I would look at the competition. I would tell them my guesstimate is how long, it would take to, how, how long it would take to get there. And I would say and how much money it would cost to get there and the chances of us succeeding. And I would say, I bill by the hour, dude. Pay me up front. So that's, that's how that works. Um, and oh, and we have a big guest here, folks. Eric Lantries has joined us. Eric, how are you doing? All the way from Montreal. I believe it's Montreal, right? Are you, no, Quebec City. It's Montreal. It's Montreal. Hey, how's it going? Okay. I don't want to interrupt. I was listening to Ian, and I was like, yeah, I'm just going to jump in. Oh, Say well, hi. thanks, Eric. Maybe I appreciate answer it. Maybe questions and like, uh, chime in. So uh, hello. Hi, everyone. I'll just, I'll leave. <laughs> how are you I'll doing? Leave. So I'll Eric is uh, a big time SEO. He's been doing education courses forever uh, on SEO. So I'm glad you joined us there, Eric. Thanks very much. Uh, I might ask you for your opinion uh, every now and then. If you have a particular opinion about any of these questions, feel free to chime in. So people don't just get tired of listening to my voice talking all the time. <laughs> all good. I, I was just, I didn't want to interrupt. You were, you were going on and it uh, sounded good. Uh, Kyle's tool and the getting from number two to number one. Keep on, keep on going. Have you been using Kyle's tool yourself? Um, I haven't been using Kyle's tool, but I th I was really interested in that question where you were just asked you were just about to answer like what do you do if someone says hey can you bring me from page from number two to number one I mean I'm interested just interested to hear what you got to say <laughs> that one. Uh, you want to know, know my I, secrets? I, well, I know, know what I would. You already say. know all my secrets, probably. You probably already know the same stuff, but but uh, yeah, I mean it, again, of course, as you know, it depends completely on the industry. So like I said, I would just take a look at the industry and I'd say you know if it was. The HUDs, well, up in Canada, I'll use a Canadian example because we're both Canadian. So if it was up in Canada and they said, I want to beat Walmart.ca and, and they're the Hudson's Bay company, we'd go, okay, sure. This is what you need to do. And it, it, it's going to cost a lot of money. And it's, and it's a big company and it's a big web development team. And so it's going to be a big uh, strategic consulting process. If you're, if you're Josh's blue shirts.com, and you want to meet? You want to beat Walmart.com? Well, I hope you have a few hundred thousand dollars in your war chest to try and do it. Not that it's impossible. Now, you know, uh, Ted and I would debate this. I might say Walmart's placed there, and there's nothing you can do to get rid of them. He might say, no, it's nothing but the algorithm. So we would have to figure it out. But it would cost you a couple hundred thousand dollars to find out in that case. But in any other smaller niche, uh, you know, it's not. They're not being placed uh, unless it's like Amazon or, or something like that. And you can you can get you can get up there, and so I would just have to take a look at the competition, and see and see what's going on in that particular case. Yeah, I agree with that. Uh, honestly, like moving up to uh, from number two to number one, it depends who you are. Uh, but that being said, I've worked actually I do consulting for um, SEO agencies that sometimes take on those clients. So that's why I have experience with that. And we've moved. Uh, was it? It was a an insurance company that'll be as as precise as I could get, but an insurance company, and you know, there's millions and hundreds of millions of dollars in that industry. Mm -hmm. um, and we're moving from number two to number one. And the reason for that was just if you're at number two in any industry, then you have the potential to be number one. So it is you you can go, but depending um, on the industry or, or whichever they are, everyone has their own staff. Their, everyone has their own budget, and it becomes in these multi-million dollar industries, it becomes about like, like you mentioned, like about budget sometimes, because uh, a lot of people have this conception that SEO is supposed to be free because 10 years ago, everyone was saying, hey, just get this free traffic, free here, free here. But in reality, the way SEO has evolved is it's still quote unquote free traffic, but it has become a, uh, you need to have investments into it. It's, it's like anything in life. You need to, in either even if you're doing a, uh, social, social media, you have to invest 
in time and money and content and so forth. SEO, you also have to invest in different ways. So honestly, it's um, it's just to bust that misconception of the, of the free thing where if you're number two, it's very possible to get to number one. And yes. I have no problems getting people there or helping people there, even for the hardest terms in the world. However, um, it is also, it's usually it's a resource game. And usually the funny thing where I think anyone that's been doing SEO in a long time is the winner is not the guy who gets number one. Honestly, like it, that sounds counterintuitive, but it's the guy that gets to the highest position while spending the less. So you get the highest ROI. So mm -hmm. if I spend $1,000 to get to number two spot and you spend $30,000 to get to the number one spot, depending on the conversions and the traffic you're getting, likely <laughs> I'm going to have a, more, a better ROI on my investment than you. Right. And that's what we really work with a lot of people say, look, I can make that $1,000 at 2000, that's $10,000 go 10 times further than your competition. So you could invest $10,000, you get a million dollars back and so forth. And then it doesn't really become about the uh, position per se, unless uh, you just want bragging rights, but then it becomes about, Hey, can I invest a thousand dollars into SEO and get $20,000 back? And that is a more interesting question. So right. if they have a, a client that just says, I just absolutely need to go from number two to number one, either they don't have a very sophisticated client, or maybe they could educate them on how um, to better see the situation saying, Hey, with this investment, I could actually get you, you know, 20 more customers per, per month or so, or a hundred more customers or 10,000 more customers, depending on the industry. So right. that's really, that's kind of like the, the way I would address it. Sometimes as a, SEO person or agency or anyone that's coming in and selling SEO, you have to educate the buyer in, in that regards. Of course. Yeah. I mean, you're absolutely right. Uh, there's, there's more KPIs than just ranking. And sometimes the stats are weird. Sometimes the third position will get more clicks than the first position, just depending on how the ads play out and how the, all the other Google products play out. It's not, it's not like the, t the 10 blue links back in 2003, where for sure the first spot got more clicks. Now it's it's all kind of weird and stuff like that. So you might do better. You're absolutely right. It's it's ROI at the end of the day. And you might do better uh, uh, doing conversion rate optimization instead, or, or something like that, to to squeeze more to squeeze more money out of it uh, than 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 spending a hundred thousand dollars to get to spot one when really it's just vanity for you wanting to get there or whatever reason it is. Uh, okay, let's see. Eddie Caspers asks. Must an AMP page have the exact same content as the corresponding non-AMP page? The answer is no, it doesn't have to. You're allowed in AMP to uh, tailor down the content to be whatever you want. Um, and if Google is telling the truth, which they're, I think they are, I don't know uh, if you guys have any experience with AMP uh, with, with seeing this, but what John Mueller has said is that uh, with the new mobile-first indexing, they're not going to take your AMP page at all. If you have a responsive design or an M dot uh, URL, they'll take that. That's that's adequate for mobile first indexing, whatever adequate means. They'll take that content. And if you don't, they will take the desktop content. They're not even going to see your AMP content or use your AMP content. The problem with that is that I have a client, and I've seen it myself, where uh, they very clearly are indexing and ranking based on the AMP content for mobile. It's it's whatever this guy's URL is slash whatever product slash AMP. And you see nothing but AMP, 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 AMP in the search console when you look. So that's not what John Mueller said, unless that's also getting served as the responsive design as well. That's not what John Mueller said was going to happen. Uh, so I don't know. Have you guys ever seen this? No, I haven't seen it. Yeah, <laughs> so muted yeah. Oh, there we go. I, I had I had to because I'm unmuting myself. Um, yeah, well, you know what, uh, I have seen I have seen a lot more AMP in the search engines results, um, especially when I'm doing some phone searches and, and so forth, like you mentioned. And uh, hopefully, I'm hoping I'm actually hoping that AMP kind of goes away. I, I don't like it from a webmaster's business perspective. Yeah, I find that there's too many features that you just don't have. Like, it's can you even get opt-ins on AMP, or you can't really have sort of that much advertisement. You can't have opt-ins. Selling it makes it makes this whole selling proposition really difficult with app. Um, so I actually, yeah, I'm, a, I'm using app as the plugin, but I'm avoiding it. And I'm, I'd rather serve the responsive mobile version because I find I get better conversions for that. Mm -hmm. So even though app definitely does seem to be winning, and I know there's been case studies done where like people put app and switch to app and they get a surge of traffic. 
I'm still trying to get better, the best rankings I possibly can with a mobile optimized page that is optimized for conversions. And I just find that whenever I do that, that's when we get, like, like I go back to the ROI thing, that's when I make the biggest ROI. It's responsive mobile pages I find are, uh, are the best. I, as long as you have not... the speed. Sorry? As long as you have the speed. Yeah, of course. Yeah, of course. Speed is huge on mobile. Speed is like probably one of the biggest ones. Yeah. And uh, I've gone through like image optimization. I've gone through the, it's the first first time, ser first bit served or whatever, like the yeah. first thing. Yes. So those are the two big ones, honestly. That's, yeah. Yeah. So we are joined by Ted Kabaitis, who had a major Google discovery this week, and he's going to tell us all what it is right now. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding, Ted. Ted's probably going to save that for the conference, probably. How are you doing, Ted? Uh, yeah, that that discovery is really interesting. The implications keep getting bigger. Oh, okay. So uh, if for you, uh, if you're wondering what it was, at least people on my white hat versus black hat Skype group got to see it before it got too big, and and literally Ted went and deleted like 30 messages in the Skype. Like Ted, message remove, message remove. People are like, wow, message remove, message remove. Wow, that's cool. Message remove, message remove. So uh, we can't say it on air. It is it's too crazy. Uh, but uh, I don't know. I'll, I'll try and twist his arm and see if he'll he'll release it at the conference we have coming up in August, the White Hat versus Black Hat conference, August twentieth, twenty second. Email me for result uh, for uh, for questions or if you're interested what what's going on with that. Now let's see if I can get through all the questions I have here. Stephen Hawkman asks, "What are the ranking results of no follow versus follow links?" That's a good question, Stephen. We've tested that, and although do follow links uh, still give more juice, of course, and more power depending on where you're getting the link from and what kind of link it is. But I found that no follow links do seem to uh, give us uh, a slight boost. So, uh, and that's in controlled environment uh, testing it. So I, I like it when uh, I'm acquiring, I'm acquiring these, these guest blog post links and there are no follow links and then any money it costs to require it, I get back acquire. He's using the scare quotes again, folks, the scare quotes. Um, Sky lands asks, how do you find and fix keyword cannibalization? Are, cinnamon, are synonyms now an issue, issue two? Are synonyms now an issue two? <laughs> blah, blah, blah. Um, the, the way I fix keyword cannibalization and the way I, 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 I deal with the synonyms is I just use the tool that I just showed you, the Page Optimizer Pro tool. Uh, uh, every, every page has to be dedicated to a keyword. You never want to double up. I never want, uh, I mean, you can, but, but Google has to then choose what, which page is going to rank. For me, anyway, um, I always have one page, one keyword family with a main exact match keyword. I always do the keyword research ahead of time to see what has the most traffic, and that's what's going to be the main keyword on this page, theoretically speaking, unless I'm going for some low-hanging fruit or I want to go for something which is not uh, as highly competitive or someplace where the SERP will look better and I can differentiate myself. Yeah, keyword cannibalization is not always bad. Sometimes it's a very, very good thing, um, especially if you have like an online retail store. So you might have a online jewelry store. You sell 15 different uh, sterling silver amethyst bracelets. All those product pages target sterling silver amethyst bracelet, which is good. As long as you know that when uh, the ones that are appearing in search sell out that you need to 410 those. So Google will put the next sterling silver amethyst bracelet page into the SERP. So you're always showing a page for an in-stock product. Right. So cannibalization combined with the 410 response when you sell out is an awesome e-commerce trick. Yeah, I mean, Google is going to automatically select. They're going to choose the canonical they think is most appropriate. And if they trust your site, they're going to choose a page on your site, and it probably won't be a problem. But it, it gets to be a problem when you're trying to rank page A, and page A and page B are on the same keyword, and they're, they're choosing page A instead of page B, but page B are all the, the, the play, that's what you want them to choose, and it's all the signals that they're choosing. When page A is the index page, that's really the problem because they'll always choose the index page over a sub page. So if you have a sub page on, on topic A with, and the index page is as well, that's going to be kind of like an adjunct page to this page. And the, the Google will usually choose this page instead. It depends on the signals and which page they like the most. 
But but I, I like to say whenever you're making Google make that decision, it, it can be an issue because they might not choose the way you want them to choose. I'd like to jump in into this one. Please, please do. All right. So I've actually I got I got this message. What is it? It's a similar question. I think is it Matt Diggity or Charles Flow posted a big guide on keyword caramelization and they're like, oh, let's let's just make mega pages. And we've been making mega pages, basically combining a bunch of co content into the one major page for a long time, ever since Panda, where they were like low quality pages. So what did people do when they had a bunch of low quality pages? Well, they took all their pages, they put them to one big page, and then they made that one, what I call a mega page. And those actually tend to do much better as long as you don't just literally cut and paste. You have to make it cohesive. So when people go through your content, you're actually getting um, a decent user experience that I don't go back to Google and search and just say, or anyways. So um, that is where we're at right now in terms of mega pages. But I do have recent, I have people that asked me very recently because of the article that came out, they're saying, oh, should I just delete all my related content? And the way Google actually likes you to do uh, things on, on, on the web is actually cover a whole topic. So when you're using the silo category, and I hope I'm not going to get too advanced for people, but when you're using siloing, what people typically do is they like have a main topic and then they have subtopics that could be different pages. So for instance, if you're talking about dogs, then one sub subtopic could be dog training and a subtopic to that could be dog food and the topic and, and so forth. You can have subtopics. So what I don't want people doing, and this is what I encountered where they're like, should I just make one big page? I'm like, no, your whole website's gonna be one big page. Instead, what Google tends to reward even more is when you have one main topic and then you have what I call branch pages, uh, which are subtopics. And I, temp I like to put the branch pages underneath the hierarchy. So if you have like slash dogs and you would have slash dogs slash training, and then you got training in there. So I don't want to repeat, I don't want people repeating the same keywords. So I don't say, don't say a uh, dog training and then canine training and, and so forth. That's bad. We all agree that's bad. You should all put that on the same page. However, if you are, if you are covering different topics with different keywords and you're making, you're just putting them all onto one page, you might be hurting yourself and shooting yourself in the foot because Google actually likes when you have sub pages that reinforce your content. So if you are working on a website, like I have multiple websites and one of them, let's say one of them is on, on a virtual reality. In virtual reality, I might have one main page, but underneath that I'll have different products that relate to that main page. So you want to have, essentially what I'm trying to do is, is say here is you want to have branch pages and sub pages um, in addition to your mega page. So if it's related, like you say, synonyms, and uh, synonyms, just put it all to the same page. If you just wrote the same thing differently, put it all to the same page. Mm -hmm. If you look at WikiHow, they have a big problem with this because they have 500 articles on the same friggin' topic. And th that yeah, that is gonna be keyword cannibalization. You wanna get everything into one. However, when you are covering subtopics or things related to it, don't be afraid to have pages with I guess similar keywords, but they're different keywords or they have different intentions, but same similar topics. So anyways, that's, that was my two cents. I, one big thing that I see a lot of people doing is they take all their, their content on that one topic and put it into one page and hope it's going to do better. And most of the time that that's not the case. You want well, it's to... probably over optimized is the problem is they probably yeah. have too much, too much there. Now, Eric, I wanted to ask you, cause I knew, I know this is one of your methods and I didn't want to say it in case it, it was secret or something, but I, I thought you might say something about it. Um, so, so I'm curious about this method. So do you think that the, when you do a branch and you have uh, dog training and dog training with clicker training, dog training, a traditional and dog training, some other thing. So you have subtopics and this page ranks better when you put the, the three branch pages underneath it in, in linking, maybe in a table of contents kind of thing, right? Yeah. Yeah. Um, do you think this page ranks better because Google's hummingbird algorithm is seeing, or some algorithm at Google is seeing that you are adding more logical semantic content to the topic of dog training? Or do you think this page is ranking better just because you gave it more internal links? Um, that's a good question. I don't actually have a definitive answer. I do have the experience of it working. So, mm. um, Oh, there, I trust you when you say it works. I know you've tested this, and I know you say it works. There, I'm wondering there, why it works. I, I think I want to do some testing on it myself. Well, there's two things that I, I encourage people. There's there's techniques. One of them, actually, just what you're talking about is whenever you got a page that's stuck, sometimes the last thing you want to do is add a 
a ton of more links to a page that's not budging no matter what, right? Because sometimes there's links. Let's say I get a page that has a, a ton of links, and no matter what link you throw at it, whether it's a good link or a bad link, it just doesn't move. Like I, I see people encounter that. Sometimes what you want to do is is this exact technique. This is what I, this is one of the things I teach. Where at a sub page with a powerful with a, like an internal link back to that. So, so say we're trying to rank for dogs, and then here we have like dog training or so forth. We have a sub page. Sure. Start, start sending links to the sub page with an internal link back to the main page, and then that that new page could accept links no problem, and it'll, that internal link will help you rank a lot more. Now, I think that Google looks to see um, if you're covering the whole topic. So I think honestly, I do think that there is some level of uh, of a benefit that you get from having sub pages with even without links, but. Where I think the real, real benefit comes from, the reason it works so well is because you're giving yourself some powerful internal links from a related page on your site. And I drive a lot of links to those branch pages, which then powers up the main page and makes me a lot of money. I don't know. That's that's going to be <laughs> the experience that I have here. And that's really the thing that a lot of, I think a lot of people miss. And um, on mega pages, because mega pages, actually, that's, that is the other thing. I've seen so many people with uh, pages that are going to be like 5,000, 7,000 words. And I used to make, I used to do those too, like 5,000, 7,000 word pages. And the problem with that is that Google, in order to conserve resources, are they're not crawling and giving priority to the bottom of a page as they are to the top of the page. Mm -hmm. If you make a, a change to the top of the page, Google is going to be very quick to pick it up, especially in terms of optimization. Let's say you want to optimize a page, you want to rank better. And you want to? You have a mega page with seven thousand words. Perfect example. You add an image at the top with a that's related file name uh, for a keyword that you want to rank. Let's say it's uh, dog puppies. Uh, that doesn't even make sense. But let, <laughs> uh, let's say you want to rank for dog puppies, and you rank. You add an image at the top. It says dog puppies.jpg. That's going to help you if it's at the top. If you add that same image at the bottom of your seven thousand words, it won't have any effect. I tested this over and over again, and that's like a really crazy thing. Where like you're adding the same image on the same page, but depending on where it's placed, it's going to have a different effect in your rankings on that keyword. Mm -hmm. So the the it, I guess the bottom line, the takeaway from this is if you're creating mega pages, awesome because those some of the, those are some of the best ranking and best pages on the internet. However, you want to conserve the 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 uh, the size as soon as you get past a critical point, which I don't know what that is, but I think it's how long Google will crawl a certain page, then you start getting uh, diminishing returns. And even at the bottom of your page, you won't be able to get all the rankings that you want from something that, let's say, had three, four pages. That's interesting. So I'm, I'm I definitely, I, I, yeah, I definitely got to test a lot of that because uh, I'm not sure if it's, I don't know if Google's smart enough. I mean, I used to drink the, the Google Kool Aid a bit more and I used to think that it probably was Hummingbird related and, and they're, they like that you have more content. I think that it's probably that they're just auto concatenating pages which are similar to each other into one single page. They're going to auto canonical all that. And I think you, that if if you get any, uh, do you ever? Let me ask you this. And this is an honest question, and, and you can answer honestly if you want. Do you ever do the the uh, sub branch method and either uh, nothing happens or it gets worse? Um, the nothing happens can can occur, but this I've never seen it get worse. Never and seen that, it get worse. Okay. And what happens is if I add branch pages, usually what were the reason? Look, my process here for anyone who wants to follow this, you start with a mega page. Like that is the step number one. And whenever I'm working with people that have a page that's stuck that no longer works, that's when we start adding branch pages because adding branch pages is going to be resource intensive. It's not something you want to do right off the bat. However, if you do add branch pages, you want to build links to those branch pages because then um, it's just the equivalent of having like three, four extra pages with no links, with maybe like one extra small internal links. Um, that might not be enough. Now, in terms of the Google treating it as one big page, I haven't really seen that unless you're using a strict pagination and you're using pagination with the rail next, rail previous tag. But that's not what I'm talking about here. I'm actually talking um, of just like having pages under underneath. And um, mm. I, I've I've seen if you just add three branch pages, it might get a page unstuck. However, what I really recommend people do is build those links to those branch pages, which Jen has an internal link pointing back to the main page. That 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 is a secret sauce. That's a technique in order to get things stuck. And my idea of it is that Google has a score for links. So when you max out, that's not not max out. The people are gonna miss 
take what I say. But when you have, when you keep on throwing links at a page and it's no longer affecting it, mm -hmm. that's when you need to start put it, throwing links at different pages with internal links back to that page, and that's going to help you gain maybe that number one spot. If you're number three, maybe that's what's missing to get you to number right. one. Or maybe even that's a time to do something different entirely, like conversion rate optimization or on-page optimization or something. I thought you were going to say AdWords or something like that. <laughs> no. <laughs> well, you might need to do AdWords too. That might be a valid strategy. But being the SEO guy, I'm like, poo, no, boo, boo AdWords. Yes, more SEO is what I would say. OK, Deirdre Calendar asks, hey, sent in a reconsideration request since mid-April and haven't heard a reply as yet. Anyone sent in a request around that time? Uh, I, I have not uh been, been doing any uh, penalty uh manual penalty re recovery r that recently um it, they can take months to respond uh, Deidre. um uh, so uh that might not be a weird thing happening if they don't respond after two or three or four months then you have a problem i would definitely uh go on one of john Mueller's hangouts and mention that and he'll probably tell you that sometimes they don't respond when the site is so bad or it's 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 like the fourth or fifth reconsideration request you've gotten and they're not even going to respond to you because they don't like your site at all. Uh, if he's being honest, he'll say that. I was, I was going to say the same thing. The first question I have is which one is it? Is, no, is it request number one or is this net request number three? Because request number one, if you write a really good re re reconsideration request and you submit it and it's the number one, and they, they see like you as being a legitimate person, you're going to get a quick response. Like, honestly, I, I, I have helped people. I've helped people all the you time. You should. You should. And you're going to get a quick response, surprisingly so. However, as soon as it gets to response number four or five, and you're just like, hey, I removed more links, ooh, you, you, will have, you no longer have priority right there. So um, <laughs> really, it is. I don't know why. I don't know how they filter this through or, or what. But if it's re reconsideration request number one, and you write a good reconsideration request, you should get a much, much, much faster result than mid mid April. That that is one month. So um, you should get a faster response than one month, um, unless mm -hmm. something fell at Google. But um, I've been getting faster responses than that, um, unless it's been reconsideration four or five. In which case, you will wait. Like sometimes. If it's a reconsideration request like number five, and you just and you literally write like, "Hey, I just removed more links. Can you check it up now?" Sometimes they're gonna make you wake almost on purpose because I, I don't know. They just don't want you to come in back and forth, back and forth, back and forth to try to discourage that. Eric doesn't want to say because Google are jerks, but but I'll say it. <laughs> I'll gladly say Google are jerks. Uh, okay, so conversion first marketing asks. Just a thought on a press, the press release deal. Google includes at, le includes at least one quarter, one third of our press release links in our clients in Search Console. I always take note of what Google spends money to report. Yeah, um, the links that Google reports in Search Console are just a sample of the links they find, uh, according to John Mueller anyway. And uh, he did leak a couple of years ago in one uh, lazy hangout that nobody was paying attention to except for probably me and probably Eric. Uh, that uh, they like to show you good links in that uh, that the, the, in the link section in Search Console and a section of the what they think are bad links in, in Search Console as well. He said specifically when someone was whining to him like the fifth time that they couldn't clean up their links. This is back like when Penguin was a, a big factor and and was uh, demoting sites and, and so he gave that little leak there that they they're they're kind of giving a uh, a uh, a notice to the webmaster that yeah we see those links here's some good ones and here's some ones we don't think are great. So um, uh, yeah, you're going to see some of the press release links, but it doesn't mean that's not all the press release links. It doesn't mean that's all your links. It doesn't mean that's all the links are being counted. And it doesn't mean because they show them in Search Console that they are being counted either. They could be no follow links, which only have a smaller, uh, a reduced rate, if any. So that's how that goes. Let's see what other yeah. questions we have here. Eric, By the do you way, have anything on yeah, that? Yeah, just on that, like very, very important because I've done, my God, too much recovery stuff in the past. Um, the Google Webmaster Tools link list is extremely important. If ever you're doing a reconsideration request, um, this is, or you're doing a manual penalty, that's the first place you want to look at. And Google will list. It's true they don't list all the links. Actually, they list a lot now, like ten times more than they used to list in the past. Mm -hmm. um, but they list the important links. And that means the important bad links and the important good links. They are there. So you technically don't need any other tool to do a successful reconsideration quest than the webmaster uh, link list. Um, every single time they've given me an example of like, hey, which link is bad? Um, sometimes 
you can actually re ask. This is a trick, by the way. If you're doing a reconsideration request, you could ask the person doing the the manual review, um, like, are there any bad links? Can you give me a sample of a bad link? And sometimes they're going to give you an example of the bad links that they're going after. And mm -hmm. every single time I've ever gotten an example, they were in my webmaster um, link list. And this actually, I have a a story where like once they reported a natural link like a real legitimate natural link from newspaper i got really upset i wrote a big story about it never published it but um <laughs> where I'm, I'm i'm on a tangent here however the webmaster tool link list is the most important tool you need to look at if you are doing a reconsideration request and these days i find that google actually provides more links in some cases actually in a lot of cases than href itself which is going to be my go-to standard for a link audits and link tools and link stuff. So Webmaster Tools has gone from listing like like a, a small fraction of links to listing a lot links, the most in fact. But mm -hmm. of course, you can only check your own links. So and they're kind of messy. So yeah. Anyways, that, that's that's my piece. Yeah, he he goes on to say uh, part two. Uh, for example, he says a lot of citation links never make it to Search Console link report, but a surprising number of our press release links do. Just his two cents. Yeah, so that would make sense based on my hypothesis in that, and and what Eric was saying is that, yeah, because your citation links are not important links. They're probably not the ones that are being counted. They're probably the spammier links that are that are not great, that they're, that they're just ignoring, that everyone's putting in their, their, uh, their, uh, their disavow file. If your press release links are making it into Search Console, that's because they're important in a good way or they're important in a bad way. And so you want to pay attention to that. Here's a hint if you want to, if they are dealing with a problem. Here's the crazy thing with the, the links, right? A lot of people go the wrong way when they're tackling links. They'll they'll remove all the links that don't make them rank, which is which is like that's what you would think. They remove all the spammy links. However, from the samples that I've accumulated, all the Google samples that Google telling me like this is a bad link, most of them were the links that were actually impacting me the most. They were the bigger links. Like if you get a, a redirect link that, uh, like an auto-generated link, Google doesn't actually care about that. That's not what they're penalizing you for. Google will penalize you for the link that is giving you a lot of rankings. Um, Google actually cares more about bad links that are giving you that are very powerful. So if you have very powerful um, links that they could tell that they have been manipulated, those are the ones that they're after. They are not really after all the auto-generated stuff that you might think and a lot of people think that is that are, are, are harming you in no, fact they ignore, one of, they ignore it yeah a lot of my my gripes with uh people that made a lot of money selling link detox tools no. uh, won't name any names but <laughs> um they were essentially scanning the entire web for the cheap like the cheap links that really didn't provide any juice anything any power so then people would just submit all that to disavow and try to do a reconsideration request and it wouldn't work so after the forced reconsideration request they would come and then i would help them identify the real links which tend to be the powerful links mm -hmm. that are impacting the site so a pbn that has like a, a dr of like 60 plus and so forth that google has caught that will be the one that they're like no no you got to take care of that and yes. <laughs> as a webmaster, you're like, oh, but I don't want to take it off because that's giving me all the juice. And Google is like, well, that's the point, right? <laughs> so a lot of people, like, if you go through your link list and you're like, oh, I really don't want to take that one off because I know it's helping me. So if I take that one off, it's going to like lower my rankings. If Google has caught that one and considers that one to be a bad link, that's the one they care about. And that's the one that you, they want you to remove for the reconsideration request. Now, Trust me, it, it does get complicated because you don't want to remove all your good links and then drop in rankings and, and so forth. But take the 10 Beast example for recently, a big affiliate site. If you're not caught up into the SEO world, they're a big affiliate site doing really well. They did a, a scholarship and then Google was like, no, we're going to manually penalize your scholarship links. Mm -hmm. Those were the links that were helping. They didn't mm -hmm. penalize the smaller links on that site. They were going after the big links. So Google does know which links are giving you the most impact, which links are giving you the, the strongest rankings. And whenever they penalize you manually, they are typically going after those big, uh, those big links that are giving you a lot of power, a lot of juice that they feel you have not got, got uh, received in a natural way. Right. So if you... If, for instance, you have a press release and it is a, no, press releases typically are fine, but if you happen to have a, a link from that 
that happen to be on a big site and that you kind of bought your way through mm -hmm. and Google has caught that you have bought your way through, that is going to be that they're going after. So yep. um, look, don't just look at the small links. Google typically doesn't care for the, uh, the, the auto-generated stuff. Google's care, Google with manual penalties, Google cares about the things that is working that they have to stop. So the stuff that's actually giving you rankings is what Google is care what Google cares about. So right, it, of course. Yeah. yeah. That's, that's where they're going to spend money for the manual time. The algorithms are ignoring all the links that are statistically the kind of links people are putting in the disavow file because they machine learned all that. That's why they did the disavow file, of course. Maybe not the first reason, but then they realized, oh, we can use this, and then they did it. Uh, Stephen Hockman asks, this is a funny one, built a new site, bought a press release distribution service on Fiverr for it, got in Google News on Digital Journal. Is this a good thing to do? Typically, I would say no. Using a Fiverr service is not a good idea. Uh, I've, I've literally de-indexed de pages from using Fiverr services. Luckily, they're all my test pages. But I've literally de-indexed pages from using Fiverr services. But if in this particular Fiverr service you brought that you got on Digital Journal and you got into Google News, well, then great. But I wouldn't do it again. <laughs> like that, that was a risk, dude. <laughs> like, like that, was, that, was, uh, that was having sex with the local stripper without a condom. If, if I could use a colorful metaphor, that's what that was. So good for you. <laughs> you, you, you saved, you, you, you got a good night, but I wouldn't, I wouldn't do it again. Um, Nathan Hammond asks, are there any industries verticals you refuse to work with? You got any favorite industry verticals to work in? I like the verticals that where they're very rich and don't ask me any questions. <laughs> That's those are the verticals I like to work in. They just they just throw me two thousand dollars a month or three thousand dollars a month and say, yeah, take care of it. I, I don't just just show me the results at the end of the month. Okay, sure, no problem. Then, then that's what we do. Uh, so uh, at the end of the day, any any need, it's a it's a business uh, it's a business choice like any other business decision. It's the return on investment, uh, and I like to work in any of them. Uh, there's no problem work, or ranking in any niche. Ranking in the porn or gambling niches gets gets funny, <laughs> like funny with a capital negative SEO and things like that, and, and hacking and illegal stuff going on, depending on those niches. Uh, but I mean, I'll I'll work in any niche. Like I said, I charge by the hour. If you pay me, then then I'll work in it. Uh, yeah, Josh, do you ever work at a cafes? Do I do I do I go and work at cafes like yeah. with a laptop or? Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I I like I like my, my, I live kind of outside of town, and so. Okay. So I like my my house. It's nice and air conditioned, and I stay here. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. I used to I used to wander around all. Well, over you're the place. you're in Montreal, dude. You're you're a beautiful major city. Uh, it was beautiful, and but the clients, like they, they said that, and the clients that I would sometimes get, I had to say no because I I like I like working out, outdoors a lot, and I I liked working all over the place. So I'd be at a cafe reviewing. Uh, one e-commerce selling adult material and like people would walk by like what was <laughs> happening and so forth and, like, the next day I go back it's something completely different and then the day after that I'm looking at like women's products like it was getting really like people were wondering like the locals there like the people that that worked there were wondering like what are you working on um, <laughs> but as long as if anyone's taking on clients like as long as they get a uh, they have a budget to work with and it's profitable so that those are going to be the best clients honestly um, if you have a system in place, let's say you have a conversion funnel and you're working for that client and you have, you could put more people on, into the website and they make more money. It is very, very easy to quantify and justify the work of the SEO person or agency or whichever. And it's worth it for the client. What's not worth it for the client is the um, hopeful people that don't really have an idea in mind where they're like, oh, I have a local business. And I think it would be better if I got more traffic to my website. So let me just get more traffic to my website. You actually give them more traffic to their website, but no one calls in, no one converts. Mm -hmm. And then they're like, well, I don't, I don't see the point of doing that. So really, the best clients that you want um, as, a, as a person is people that have a, a system in place where they have strong conversions already. And those are going to be clients for life. They're going to pay you a ton. And those are going to be people that are be coming back and back and back. But uh, avoid yeah. the people that don't know what they're doing in the first place. Unfortunately, uh, I do have a class of clients that the cost of SEO is just going up and the cost of AdWords goes up and, and they're a small local business usually and they just don't have the money. Like they, they, didn't, they didn't realize how much it would cost to, uh, but all their traffic has to come from, from SEO. Like there's some business to consumer kind of local uh, business and all their traffic comes from Google and all their business comes from Google, but they didn't realize how much it would cost to compete in that market. 
and they just they're like i'm like i'm like i'll do it for you i can get you there i just need whatever per month and they're like i have 50 dollars a month does that work and i'm like no <laughs> no 50 dollars a month does not work for me and you know and that's how that's how much they can afford and so that's really unfortunate uh that when that situation happens uh but you know it's it's uh i blame google <laughs> i i have i have a mortgage to pay too and so i blame the royal bank of canada and google <laughs> for for the problems there andrew recheck asks uh, this is a good question we often hear that poorly coded websites can influence rankings can you talk a little bit about how we can identify a website that has poor coding that's a really good question andrew at the end of the day it doesn't really matter uh, uh, per se, how well coded your website is. You don't have to have valid HTML as long as it's valid enough that Google can read it. And as long as Chrome can read it, Google can read it. And it doesn't matter how bad the coding is really, as long as it's not affecting the speed. And it's where the speed is affected is where you have a problem. Or you're getting like lots of 404 errors. That's not a ranking problem. That's just a crawl budget issue. So if you spit out a million 404s and you only have 10 product pages, well, then you're going to have a ranking issue because Google's never going to get to crawl your product pages. They're busy crawling your 404s. But that's a really unrealistic example. So the only time in my books, and you guys can weigh in on this too, the only time in my books that a, a poorly coded website is an issue is that if you're affecting the speed of the paint time, and we literally did a test where we added in Walmart's CSS and JS to a test page, and it took it, uh, over eight seconds to load. And the rankings for that page was number one, and it tanked to the bottom of the SERP after that. So we know that increasing paint time is a ranking factor in a controlled environment. And we removed those CSS and JS, and it slowly, over the next few weeks, it went back to number one. So uh, if your poor coding is causing a speed problem, that's definitely an issue. He can uh, he can use the W, I think it's W3C HTML validation tool to uh, check check uh, to see if uh, he has vid uh, he or she has a valid HTML. And that usually will help. And yeah, Josh is right. Uh, when it's affecting speed, yeah, then it's a, it's a big issue. But when it's not, it's, it's not a big deal. As long as Chrome can read it, it's fine. Uh, our, our testing has, hasn't shown it be, to be a big deal. What about, what about yours, Eric? Uh, you guys want some juice? I, I know you're going to be excited about this. All right, cool. So like you say, has nothing, like for mom and pop sites, Page speed uh, code can be crappy and it'll still rank. And chances are, if you're a mom and pop, you're basically using WordPress and you're going along, and that's that's perfectly fine. However, page speed uh, not code typically impacts layout a bit. And when you do have code issues and layout issues, you will start to lose a few points, a few points, a few points. It doesn't really matter at first, and it really doesn't matter. It doesn't really matter um, if you are using a, if you have a small site, you're using WordPress and so forth. However, um, bad code, especially moving forward, is leading to more and more layout issues, and the quality algorithm is downranking a few pages with bad code. Not because the code is broken per se, but because of what the code results in, in terms of what, the way they produce. So you're going to have kind of like a div, like a box, that is not centered because you have bad code. Or you're going to have an image that's overlapping because you have broken, like you have a broken tag there. Mm. And at first, you know, if, if it renders properly and everything is fine, um, at first, it, uh, it's it's not that bad, especially if it's just on one page. However, here's the kicker: you want to see you want go to Overstock.com. Overstock.com has the worst code of any major e-commerce store in the world. And recently, Overstock.com has lost a lot of um, traffic from Google. The reason being is because they have bad code. That is going to be if anyone wants to be go consult for Overstock.com. One of the major reasons is because they're running into a lot of. Um, issues where Google's penalizing them and they're not ranking them as high because of, of primarily because of their code and the way they're creating their website. So um, like I said, from a mom and pop shop, you're using WordPress, don't worry about the code too much. If you use like B and you forget to close a tag, it probably won't matter. Use W3 as a school, as a resource, or there's a W3 checker. That's perfectly, you get 99% uh, fine on that. For people with old e-commerce stores, however, that coded everything themselves, you're going to start running into sh into issues, especially every single year it moves forward. Google is getting stricter and stricter and stricter and stricter, and you're going to run into issues with that. Um, and it's not much. Let's say it's 4%, 3%, or let's say it's 5 to 
it, it doesn't matter that much on a if you only have a, a website with 20 pages but when you have a website with a hundred thousand pages like overstock.com then you might lose a few million dollars uh per month because of your bad code so um i really encourage like if, if anyone wants like I, this is something i was checking out recently uh overstock.com has a lot of they, i think they were in the news because they lost uh, a crap load of google traffic and one of the main issues because of that and i don't even know if they know i didn't tell them but it is going to be the um website layout issues and poor code and if you ch if, last time i checked i think it was like all overstock.com slash html they're still using html stuff that they've just adapted over the years it's ridiculous <laughs> anyways so um to say that if you're using WordPress and all that, then don't worry about the code too much. But if you are using uh, an old thing, like maybe Evolution or like an old e-commerce platform, you have everything in HTML, like a lot of the old Yahoo e-commerce stores, then you might want to look at the code because it can have a bigger impact these days. And that's not something I would have said maybe five years ago where Google didn't care as much. But in 2018, especially recently, it seems as if you're getting every year that goes by, they're getting a little bit more severe on code. Yeah, but we're talking about- layout issue or if, or if it's yeah. breaking your mobile rendering as well, yeah. that yeah. could be an issue. But, but uh, and speed, I think, I think is the main issue. So we're running out of time here, folks. I just wanna get to the last questions. Uh, somebody in the chat asked um, about Eric's uh, branching method uh, and doubling up on keywords. No, you wouldn't, uh, Eric's has specifically said on this uh, just a half an hour ago, you wouldn't double up on the keywords. So you have dog slash training. You wouldn't have dog slash dog training. I mean, I guess you could, but if you wouldn't have like dog training slash dog training clicker or dog training slash dog training leash, yeah, you wouldn't double up on those keywords, would you, Eric? Yes or no? No, no. That, that's that's exactly it. Let's say you have, let's say you have um, you're talking about a car, and then you would have slash wheel, and then you would have like you would have um something on the steering wheel. And I would name that steering wheel. I would have like slash car and then I would have slash steering wheel. And I would have the title of that page called steering wheel, which would relate back to the car, but it wouldn't be, um, it wouldn't be car steering wheel. It wouldn't right. like, I'm not trying to repeat the words over and over and over again. I'm trying to make them relate um, to the topic that I'm talking about. Cause if it is, if it's very close, then chances are, if you could fit it on the main page because it's really close, then just have a, a, that main page be that mega page with a table of content and then put all the stuff in that table of content. Uh, the, the only time I'm using branch pages is when if main page is stuck, I need an extra boost and I wanna power it back up. And then in which case I would cover different um, subtopics on that main topic, but not the same topic. So hopefully that that's clear. That makes perfect sense. Yeah, and we've yeah. tested uh, doubling up on keywords in the URL, and it usually uh, uh, gives a demotion for being some form of over-optimization. Not always, but, but usually. And the last question from Power B is, if I have links from a spammy site to my site, which have valid keywords in the URL, should I re redirect them or ignore? Uh, Power B, I have a specific philosophy when it comes to links with all the testing I've done in a single variable environment, and that is this. Ignore your links entirely. Ignore them. You don't worry about whatever links people are pointing to you until you get a manual action. And until such times, you have no linking problems. It's free link juice. Google is choo choosing what links it wants to count, and they're, they're choosing what links they're going to ignore. I wouldn't go buying crappy links from a crappy neighborhood just because they're just not going to count. They're not worth the money. But I, I, I've tried to do negative SEO through linking uh, till I'm blue in the face, and I, I can't make it work. It's all far as I can tell, there's no such thing. All there is, and disavowing is not going to help you at all. I've tested this like 12 times. It's not going to help at all. In fact, it'll, it'll hurt. So just ignore the links that you're getting until you get a manual action, and then you got to do all that good stuff that Eric said earlier. I don't know if Eric, if you agree or disagree, but we're out of time, so my answer is going to stand. <laughs> so I'd like to thank Eric, uh, Gabriel, Ted for joining. Ted, I see you unmuted yourself. Do you have a final thought for today? Oh yeah, uh, you know when you're doing white hat. Uh, Google wants you to pretend you don't even know what links are. You don't know you have them. You don't know what they are. You don't know what they're for. You're just learning. Yeah, who knows? Who knows what links are for? All right. So I'd like to thank you guys all for joining. I'd like to thank you all for watching. If you have any SEO questions at all, email me at joshbashinsky at gmail.com. As I said, I have, a, I have a private Skype group you can join to get test meetings and see test results. And I have a conference coming up on August 20th, 20th to 22nd. Email me for details. 
And if you have any SEO questions, email me. And SEO Miss, the sale is still on for this month, so email me about that as well. I'd like to thank you guys for joining. As I always say, good luck in the SERPs. See you next time.